Welcome to Illuminati Silver. We tell the truth about silver. Today is Tuesday the 21st of April 2020 and yesterday we published a video entitled All Prices Slump WTI Below $13. What does this mean? Where we highlighted that May contract WTI crude prices fell to below $13. Well, at the time of publishing this video podcast, it's now in negative territory. And we've also seen a fall in the price of silver, and equity markets too have taken a hit. So let's take a look at two articles published by Bloomberg this morning. Bloomberg article, dated April 21st, 2020. World's biggest oil storage firm says almost all space sold. The world's biggest independent oil storage company said that space for traders to store crude, and refined fuels has all but run out as a result of the fast expanding glut. Quote, the available capacity on the oil side is almost completely sold out for our terminals. Unquote. Gerard Polides, the chief financial officer of Rotterdam based Royal Vopac NV, said in an interview For Vopac, worldwide available capacity that is not in maintenance, is almost all gone. And from what I hear elsewhere in the world, we're not the only ones. The firm is racing to complete maintenance to free up whatever space it can. Worldwide oil demand has collapsed at an unprecedented speed, caused by a mass halt to global transportation systems and hurt economies. With producers failing, reduce output at the same pace, an oversupply of crude and fuels has quickly emerged. US crude oil futures for May moved into negative territory on Monday, meaning traders were effectively willing to pay people to take barrels. A large part of that was because of concerns about space to store. During yesterday's session, traders were left desperate to avoid having to take delivery of actual oil because nobody needs the supply and there are fewer and fewer places to put it. Vopac operates three main hubs worldwide in Singapore, Rotterdam and Fajaria. The company traditionally benefits from contango in oil and fuel markets where the spot price is depressed, meaning oil can be stored for sale later at a higher price. The company said in its earnings release today, that the impact of Contango will certainly be seen in the second quarter. Vopac, which has limited exposure to the United States, is working at fast pace to bring back from maintenance at four tanks in Rotterdam. Quote, All the available capacity that is in demand will be used and is used, unquote, Polidus said. End of article. Bloomberg article by Robert Brand, dated April 21st, 11.30 a.m. GMT plus one. U.S. equity futures retreated along with stocks in Europe and Asia on Tuesday, as uncertainty about the health of North Korea's dictator introduced more unease into markets, roiled by the ongoing oil collapse. Contracts on the three major American gauges surrendered gains after reports that North Korea's Kim Jong-un was in critical condition. Benchmarks throughout Asia slumped. All industry sectors were in the red as the Stocks Europe 600 index fell for the first time in four days, with energy companies leading the decline. The dollar climbed against most major currencies, with the won and ruble tumbling and the yen edging up. Treasuries headed higher with core European bonds. West Texas oil remained in focus after May contracts expiring Tuesday plunged at the start of the week, taking crude below zero for the first time in history amid rapidly filling American storage tanks. Those futures in New York remained below zero after sinking as low as minus $40.32 in the previous session. The June contract plunged as much as 42% on Tuesday before hovering around $15. The spread between the two reflects the fear that those who take physical delivery of crude in the near future may not find any outlet or storage for those barrels. 
Mystery surrounding Kim Jong-un's health after US and South Korean officials gave differing accounts of the North Korean leader's condition. The risk of instability in the region adds to a host of market headaches, including the gut-wrenching oil slump and concerns about the outlook for the global economy. Investors will be looking to corporate earnings, with almost one-fifth of S&P 500 companies reporting this week. Quote, the uncertainty about who succeeds him in North Korea is the great unknown. That's what is making markets nervous, said Jeffrey Halley, senior market analyst at Oanda Asia Pacific. Elsewhere, the Kiwi slumped after Reserve Bank of New Zealand Governor Adrian Orr said he was open-minded on the idea of directly monetizing sovereign debt. End of article. Now, let's also listen to a brief discussion we had with controversially Greg on this subject, who brings an additional perspective into account. Greg, good morning. Good morning. Another lovely morning. It, it is, without any doubt, unless, of course, you're in the oil business. Now, I don't know if you've noticed, Greg, but the time at the moment is 11.12 a.m. GMT plus one. And looking at WTI crude oil futures here of, well, actually the May 2020 contract, which will end today, we can see that WTI crude oil is minus $7.65 a barrel, whereas Brent crude is a positive $21.03. What's happening, Greg? Well, yesterday, oil was standing at about $11 something, and then it crashed to zero. I'm not sure whether that was overnight or just before closing. And now it's minus seven. Yesterday, Brent crude was at 27 something. And now it's gone down because of the drop in the WTI. Mm -hmm. What you've got to look at here is the fact that just short of a third collapse in usage of oil worldwide at the moment. It's actually, I think, 29% down. Normally, you're talking of around 100 million barrels a day of usage around the world, which is adequately met by OPEC and other oil producers, including America. But let us bear in mind, there is virtually no shortage of oil and never realistically likely to be in the foreseeable future. It seems almost as if you can drill a hole to the correct depth, whatever that might be in your part of the world, and oil will come out as long as you pump in enough pressure to bring it to the surface. So oil is a prolific commodity on this planet. And there is no record of any major oil field in the world which has dried up through having been pumped dry. Yes, there are perpetually claims that the reserve has fallen, but it never seems to fall far enough to actually run dry. So there is also a belief that oil is possibly a result of a living organism, which because it functions deep underground and functions under huge pressures and temperatures, is not an organism that we begin to understand. And when we bring it to the surface, it doesn't look anything like an organism as we understand it. Let's consider the actual problem at the moment. Oil usage has collapsed. Oil producers are reining in their production, but they can't rein it in too far, or they have a problem with production and re-gearing when it's required again. That leaves them with a massive surplus. It's not the oil producer's problem yet, because all of the oil is forward sold under contract. Why this has suddenly struck a negative price is the total 
lack of storage for oil for the people who are committed to taking delivery of oil that they have no further customer for, the oil brokers. And they have no idea where to store it. And they are over, dare I say, uh, over a barrel with the, the people with storage facilities. The United States has just taken delivery of a huge quantity of petroleum oil, and that has gone into top up their national storage capacity. America, government wise, is full of oil in as far as they can store it. So the people who are taking delivery are going to have to pay through the nose to store the oil that they have no customer for. This has crashed the price, but because they're in a position to adjust, this means that oil prices for, I believe it's June and July, both stand at $21 a barrel because they will have adjusted the amount down to what they estimate they will require. That leaves the suppliers, the extractors, with the problem of what to do with the surplus. Now, Brent crude has stayed up because our clientele for Brent crude around the world are still taking deliveries and have storage capacity for Brent crude. They don't have it for things like HFO and various other oil commodities. This is going to be an interesting juggling act that could see some of the brokers go broke. Thank you very much, Greg. Really appreciate your insight on this. Having carried out the interview with Greg, time has moved on, and it's currently 13.40 GMT plus one, and European equity markets are down some 3%. Gold prices have fallen too, and currently stand at $1,666, and silver prices are down to $14.72 an ounce. The dollar index has now risen above 100 and stands at 100.29. Tomorrow, we shall produce a video on why we are now encountering lower equity markets, lower oil prices, and now lower precious metal prices all at the same time. A small hint for some of these. The value and perceived future value of the US dollar. Thank you so much for listening. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe to our channel and press the bell sign so that you're notified of our videos as and when they're published. Not forgetting that we update our Richard and Greg channel every other day or every few days. And so if you haven't already done so, please subscribe to that one too. We hope you have found this video interesting and informative. And if so, please give it a thumbs up and share it on social media. Please ensure that you have subscribed to our channel and press the bell sign so that you are notified of any future videos. Also kindly visit our website at illuminatisilver.com and if you haven't already done so, please subscribe either as a free or paying member for regular email updates and offers. Disclaimer. Illuminati Silver owners come from a background of banking, international wealth management and economics. Having now retired from these worlds, we are not qualified to give investment advice. Therefore, this and other productions must not be deemed to be giving such advice and merely represent the personal views of its owners.